A good kick drum sound relies on a lot of things, one of them being mic placement. Find out what happened when we put a mic on the batter side of the kick drum. Coming up. Hi, I'm Kevin Zahner, and if this is your first time on Rhythm Notes, please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming and home recording today. I have a lot of sessions coming up, and I'm not too pleased with my kick drum sound lately. So I think it's the mic. I've tried the Beta 91, the Beta 52. I've tried different mic placements, different combinations, and I'm just not happy. So I'm gonna try some different things that I've never done before. Uh, some of the ideas that I got from Steve Albini's approach to kick drum mics, where you put a kick drum mic on the batter side. For this video, we're gonna use a kind of low end, inexpensive, condenser mic, a small one because it just fits really nicely on the batter side. When I add toms and floor toms and cymbal stands and things like that later, it's just going to be more compact. If that doesn't work out, I have some other things we might try. I didn't try a variety of distances and angles for this mic. I just aimed it right at the beater at a comfortable distance. We're gonna to listen to the mic inside the drum, which is a Shure Beta 91, and then we're gonna to listen to both of them together. If you are interested in more information on drum mic placement, head over to rhythmnotes.net where you'll find an article on miking drums for live and recording situations. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. I like the big low end that we got with the condenser mic on the batter side. So I actually wanted to see what would that be like with that same mic on the front head, on the, the resonant head, maybe even just about a foot or so away from the drum. This got me thinking, why not build a tunnel? And if you ever haven't built a tunnel before, just grab a table or sometimes those fold out uh, chairs or you know couch cushion deals that are all together work pretty well. Uh, in this case, I used a small table and a shipping blanket because it's pretty heavy and it's gonna help cancel out some of the bleed from other instruments. For the amount of work that it was to put it all together, which wasn't too bad, uh, the tunnel really didn't yield great results. So far, I think the best results have been on the batter side. It's just that when you start to mix, you have to do a lot of maybe side chain ducking and things like that to get the batter sound to not take too much from the bottom of the snare head. Perhaps it's the mic. Maybe a different mic for the tunnel experiment would be the better idea, but this 
video is really about whether or not it's going to work on the batter side. Miking the batter side reminded me of the cocktail kit video. <laughs> I'll put a link to that video up here and in the description below. I really liked the sound of the kick on that video. It's a it's a floor tom, right? With a kick drum head and uh, at beta 52 underneath. The beta 52 is a dynamic mic, so I thought it'd be interesting to compare that to the condenser mic. The biggest thing I learned from this experiment is that there's a lot of opportunity on the batter side of the kick drum. And I might try the lavalier mic options that Steve Albini suggests, but I'll do an update video when I head down that road. So I decided to just stick with Old Faithful, the 52 on the front head, uh, and the 91 inside. Now, you can use just the 52 itself and have a variety of different mic placements, like closer to the batter head facing the beater or facing the shell or maybe more toward the uh, front of the drum. You want to kind of avoid the middle. There's a tubbiness, a, like a boxy, hollow sound that you don't want to deal with uh, so much. You want to be on um, one side of the middle or the other and maybe aiming at the shell or aiming at the batter head. No, It just depends on what you're looking for. Play around with it. Find the the, the best location for your sound. I like the 52 near the sound hole just a little bit and uh, the 91 and the 52 I think work pretty well. Let's take another listen. If you like this video and want to watch another one, check out this video that YouTube suggested for you. If you want more free drum lessons, you can check out these playlists over here. If you want notation for those lessons, go to rhythmnotes.net. I'll put the link in the description below. And thanks for watching. Bye.